Hi everyone, I am Susan Jacob and in this video I am going to demonstrate the divide and conquer technique of nucleofractus. As you can see the main port and the side port are kept at an angle of about 60 to 70 degrees to each other and this is to be able to facilitate cracking in an easy manner later in the surgery. A well centered rexus of about 5.5 mm size should be aimed for. An inferiorly decentered rexus can make superior sculpting difficult. Similarly, a too large rexus can cause excessive movements of the nucleus within the bag and can cause the nucleus to repeatedly prolapse out of the bag while sculpting. A hydro dissection is done and it is made sure that the nucleus can rotate freely. Once the nucleus rotates freely, it is time to uh, sculpt the nucleus. The first groove is made starting above the center point of the nucleus but taking care not to engage the rim of the rexus. The initial superficial sculpting is stopped short of the rexus rim so as not to damage it. However, once the groove is adequately deep, it can be taken beyond the rexus margin. The groove is also widened to an approximate size of about one and a half phaco tips and this allows uh, the phaco tip with sleeve to enter within the groove for deeper sculpting. Moderate flow, low vacuum and continuous ultrasound power allows the phaco tip to move smoothly through the nucleus. The power use should be based on the nuclear density with harder nuclei needing higher power. Downslope sculpting followed by upslope sculpting once the center of the nucleus has been crossed is done to follow the curve of the posterior capsule and to avoid any rupture of the posterior capsule. The groove is determined to be adequately deep once it is about 3 phaco tips deep and once a clear red reflex is seen through the groove. Once deepened inferiorly, the nucleus is rotated and also deepened in the opposite direction. And once the first groove has been thus created, the cross groove is created at 90 degrees to it. This is again created in a similar manner, about one and a half phaco tips wide and about three phaco tips deep so as to be able to see a clear red reflex and since the center of the nucleus has already been crossed, only upslope sculpting is performed. A longer lever arm eases rotation and therefore less force is required when the second instrument is placed in the periphery of the groove created than in the center to rotate the nucleus. As mentioned earlier, sufficient power should be used based on the nuclear density. Insufficient power can lead to the nucleus being pushed forwards and this can lead to zonular stress. Similarly, low levels of vacuum should be used. Higher vacuums can cause the nucleus to stick to the phaco probe and uh, can cause inefficient sculpting. Once a clear red reflex is seen through the grooves, it is time to crack the nucleus. I am demonstrating conventional cracking here. The two instruments are placed well within the depth of the groove created and the instruments are moved to the ipsilateral side to create a crack that starts in the periphery and propagates centrally. The nucleus can then be rotated 180 degrees to complete the crack in the opposite side. Once this is done, it is again rotated 90 degrees and the four quadrants are thus created. It is important to make sure that the posterior plate has completely been cracked and for this uh, it is especially important that the central part of the nucleus is also sufficiently thin. Not performing downslope sculpting uh, while grooving can lead to a thick posterior plate which refuses to crack. Cross cracking is the other technique and is useful when the main and side ports are at 90 degrees to each other. In this technique, the two instruments are placed within the groove and are pushed to the opposite side in order to be able to create the two hemisections. Each quadrant is then embedded at mid-depth and brought out one by one to be emulsified at the iris plane. As the quadrants fit together like a jigsaw puzzle, the first one is the most difficult one to bring out but once the first has been brought out, subsequent quadrants can easily be brought out into the anterior chamber to be emulsified. The rest of the surgery is carried out as usual. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching.